previously on Killer Frequency. Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? You must make a sacrifice to us. We want cheese dusted pretzels. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. Needless to say, I won't actually be going out to the gas station to buy anything for these kids. And none of you should be going out tonight either. We've got an actual killer out there. Lightning is Santa Sharp. I hate the cops now. And now some psycho dressed like the Whistling Man is after me. Where are you now? Did you escape to somewhere safe? Oh, I did, baby. I jazz ran all the way to my car, but I dropped my keys somewhere. I oh, he's back. But I gotta start this engine without the keys. How do we start this, baby? What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is... Five seven six eight nine four three two zero. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. We strip and we brush and. <gasps> and that body. Fantastic work, baby. Looks like we got another caller on the line. Folks, surprise, surprise, he's looking for Leslie. Well, too bad she left faster than a cop at a donut sale. But hopefully he's got a plan B. Uh, I'm 911. I am 911, at least for tonight, anyway. Damn it, son. I don't care who you are. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. My gosh, my dude, I'm about as anonymous as fireworks on 4th of July. Uh, we're kind of live on the air. We're live on the air? Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teens. They get worse every year. Nah, this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. Yeah, I think I think he's back. And now he's back. Maurice, I don't know what's going on, but he's back. The whistling man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Can you... get out of there? Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah. I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. Of course, the stairs are the only way out. And it would out. take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions? So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. All right, it's time for a little finesse. We're about to play some interesting Marco Polo with the killer. Getting, we could probably get an exclusive interview with the killer. Yeah, there you go. Or maybe that. And get an exclusive interview with the killer. That could be interesting. No, I mean we just make a distraction. 
It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. <laughs> Sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... <sighs> you realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. Well, Maurice says that he's cool under pressure. Well, you know what? If being an ass was an Olympic sport, he'd have the gold. You don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell. I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second, too. Let's just hope he can run faster than his mouth for once. Don't let me down. Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Okay, go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. Oh, it's so bright! Oh my goodness, no, go down! This must be it. All right, so we, we got we got the facts from the sh machine with a map of everything. All right, uh, what do we do here now? It's press for hey, Peggy. did you get the facts? Yep, I yes, have it. Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my facts? Yep, yeah, I got yep, it right here. I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him. Avoid the Whistling Man. Here's the situation. The Whistling Man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. Mm hmm. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number and then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? He searched every room. So let's have Maurice move. Or not Maurice. We want to lure the killer to the boardroom, probably. I mean, we could have him move into the archives. Wait, no. We can't have him move into the archives. I think that's where Maurice is at. Call the archives. The extension is 01. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? You need to go to the kitchen? We're moving to the kitchen. The kitchen? That's just across from the archives. It's going to be tight. Are you sure, Nash? Am I sure about this? Yeah, let, let me rethink this. Uh, let Let's rethink, rethink it. This. Damn it, man! <clears throat> do you want me to be a headline murder? Hurry up! Don't tempt me. Uh, and second thought, let's dial another room. Let's dial another... Boy, we're wasting time! He's right, Forrest. I can get another number ready. But we probably won't get to change our minds again. Where do you want me to call? Like it. Call the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. The boardroom? Don't be a horse's ass! Forrest, this is no time for jokes. Where should I call? Yeah, you know what? We'll call just the do archives. it. The extension is 01. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? The kitchen. You're moving to the kitchen. The kitchen. That's just yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. But you got it. Going to be tight. Are you sure, Nash? Yeah, it's gonna be sure. Just I'm do sure. it. Just do I'm it. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. actually heading to the archives. It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now what do we do? 
We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the Whistling Man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Trey is all over me. He's probably dead. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? By the skin of my teeth, I am. Oh. Came out of the archives almost as soon as he <clears> entered. <throat> Thank God I made it in here just a second before. The killer already searched the archives. He probably didn't have to look around much. Did he see you? Are, are you safe for now? He didn't see me, no. Let me just check the security cameras to see where he went. Looks like he's heading towards the cubicles. We have enough intern desks to keep him busy for a little while. I'm not out of the woods yet, though. Uh, right. Let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the Whistling Man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. So he's going to spend less time in the room that he already searched. That's actually good to know. I can move the furniture out of the way. But not quickly or quiet. Uh, hey, Maurice, can you play dead? Time to put those acting skills to use there, buddy. Hey, you know what the good news is, is that if you win it, then you're least likely, you're going to get an award for least likely to scream. You'll be alive. Play dead. What if you played dead? Maybe the killer would walk off and you could get out after him. Nash, he knows I'm not dead. That's the whole reason he's here to kill me. Uh, can you lock him Could in you a lock room? lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulations say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait, no. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? Now's not the time, Peggy. Peggy, I don't think now's the time to be playing around like that. You're right. Sorry, Forrest. Kids, we're in the big time now. I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in, we can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god, Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Use yourself as bait? Uh, maybe you could use yourself as bait? Absolutely not. Are you sure you can't? Don't be a horse's ass. <laughs> Alrighty then. New plan. Uh, use a radio? Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. I hope he's a 189.16, the Scream fan. I'm glad you got a radio fan there. Is he listening 16. to 189.16, the Scream? Gallows Creek's best and only late night Colin show. Jesus, Ash. <laughs> I'd expect that level of self advertisement from Brian Ponty. Oh, uh, how could you compare you. me to Ponty? Don't be a Ponty Forest. That's love. He compared me to oh, a Ponty. Focus now. His portable radio should still be here. It should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. We're gonna save him, Forrest. Heck, if this works, we might even save the whole town. Let's make it happen. We're close. Let's make it happen, Peggy. How can we fail? I mean, it's a plan with steps. Get the radio, plan it in the secret archives, lure the killer, and... Oh! Call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello? Nash, are you there? I'm here. 
Is everything okay? I found the radio! It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just gonna turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Uh, turn Maurice, the volume turn down. Turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Uh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Wait. Ah, oh, god damn it. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead! You just... Oh, that's a good point. Well, that's easy. We are kind of the radio. But wait! Oh. We're the radio! We can just be quiet until you're ready! Uh, good job, Peggy. If you can do that, then... Yeah, sure. 189.16. Now, even when I know something for a fact, I like to double-check. But after your earlier self-advertisement, Nash... I don't think that's necessary. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? Um, okay, he's already checked the archives. We can't send him to the archives again. The only other room that he hasn't checked that he might spend some time in is the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay. Calling the boardroom now. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'm gonna impersonate Mr. Russell. I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? Hey, you damn kids! I think I gave that mask freak to slip. What a great plan this is, pal! Uh, I'll give you an A for effort. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. Radio set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am. Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment has kept me alive so far, Nash. What do you reckon? He can't go to the cubicles. That will kill him. He literally said that there's an open area under the desk. We're going to have to risk the time for the cabinet. Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well, this is it. Going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Brothers, hold. Brothers, hold. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. That's it! No more hiding! I'm a tough old man! I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive! Come on down, whistling man! Come and get a knuckle sandwich! Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We've just locked up the Whistling Man. Forrest, you beautiful bastard! <laughs> I can't 
can't believe that actually worked! <laughs> Frankly, neither can I! If I'm being honest, I can't believe it either. Ah, God, it's over. I'll be off now. Gotta get out of here. Write up a few notes. Call a few friends. I'd feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview tomorrow for the Gallows Reporter. I'll think about it. Let's see what tomorrow brings. I'll take that as a yes. Talk to you soon. There we are, folks. The Whistling Man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. And play some killer tunes. You know what? Let's go with this one. Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song, 1980X. Looks like the night should be pretty easy from here on out. Right? Thank God that's over. I guess we got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time? You're gonna interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. Peggy just said that I'm shrouded in mystery. Well, I'd like to think of myself as a human version surprise party. Just without the balloons or the cake. And hopefully less screaming, but I'm gonna regret, I'm gonna regret this, but okay. Uh, I'll regret this, but okay. Question one. Tell me about your family. What? <laughs> Come on, Peggy, that, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. <laughs> You're sorry? Why? Did you do it? You're sorry? Why? Did you do it? Of course not! I only- I'm just messing with you. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Huh. What a coincidence! Huh. What a coincidence. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck, and, well, that was Dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget Dad so bad, she even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day, and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call That's me little, Peg. That's a little yeah, depressing. Sorry, I was just... Trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. What on earth could someone want at this hour? I don't know. Do you want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? I can't leave the booth while we're on air. One of Reggie's KFAM regulations. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Gee, thanks, Peggy. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Peggy. The buzzer's on the front door. See you in a bit. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go check it and, and you know, die. Okay. Down to the first floor, then check the door. I don't even know where the first floor is. Where? I'm guessing it'd be here. What's it? What's it here? That is the way out think a tape play on air yeah i don't know if i actually want to play this on the air but all right i'll bite this way Time bum, to turn bum, the bum. Music off. okay yep let's turn off the music hello gallows creek time to pay the price time to pay for lies time to sit there i will punish you i'm going to enjoy this 
I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? I... Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Folks, the... Oh. <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how or why that came through our door with the killer locked up, but be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. The scream! Hey, we had a call come in. We have a call? Collar, you're on 189.16. The scream. 16. With Ash! Shut up and listen to me! Scream! Mr. Russell? What's wrong? Are you okay? I said listen! He's gone! The whistling man is gone! So he did escape. So the one who left the cassette, he really did escape. You mean you knew he escaped? And you didn't tell me! We only just found out. We weren't even sure it was him. Mr. Russell, where are you now? What happened? Well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. I phoned some buddies, and we came back here to keep watch. Then what happened? I'm getting to that. We came back here. Door was shut, just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks, and, well... There was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. They thought we could teach the freak a lesson before the cops got him. Did you let him escape? Did you let him escape? Of course we did it. I demand you retract that accusation. Oh, damn it, Maurice. Just tell me what happened with this plan of yours. This was not my idea. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and... Then? Then nothing. The room was empty. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure it was still locked? I'm telling you it was locked. No way out of there. None. Maybe. Hmm. I mean, I know it's crazy, but if he's back from the dead, then... Well, if Peggy thinks that the whistling man is some sort of ghost... I would be calling the Ghostbusters. Do you think he's some kind of ghost, Peggy? It would explain things. I mean, how do we know he's not? Mooney, there's no way. Oh, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. I said baloney. Look, I don't want anything more to do with this. I'm clearing out a dodge. And I recommend you and everyone listening do the same. He seems really spooked. Wouldn't you be if you got attacked by a serial killer who turned out to be a demonic spirit? He's not a demon, Peggy. Yeah, you're probably right. But what do we do now? Who are you gonna call? No, okay. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. You're gonna love this next track. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. You stopped the show for a tape? You stopped the show for a tape? Just go get it. Okay, 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 okay. I'm getting, I'm getting the tape. Play me ASAP off the air. All right, I've got it. Did we forget an ad or something? I don't know. It was buried in my work mail. I only just saw it. See what it says. Uh, play me ASAP. Off air. That's Reggie's handwriting. And he wrote it in purple. And? Purple is Reggie's angry color. He only writes in purple when he's really pissed off. He has an angry color? Yeah, that's... I'd be more like... Yeah, he has an angry color. He has an angry color? Oh, Forrest. I'll give you the Reggie rundown later. Right now, we need to play that tape. Or try your call again. Ugh, straight to voicemail? My god. Are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. 
I'll be frank. I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Prior and current friendship, Gina. Forrest Nate, you all right? Don't worry about Gina. You know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played okay. on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest. You know... Roddy Snatcher? I like to snatch her. <laughs> we're we're old friends. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Roddy yeah. and I are old friends. I love Roddy. I will always find you was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god. I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K Fam, not to me. Then it's got to be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm getting the song. We're running down. We're getting the the song. Well, at least now that we have access to down here. Sure. All right. Where's this song at? Uh, Barb, I don't know how to say this, but I think we should see other people. Oh, that's a breakup note. This oh, here we go. go. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. Final breath. Sweet. We got it. Peggy, I got the album. Hey, did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. Gallows Creek, I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. He is. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. The worst of Gina Franklin. Hmm. And I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. I really hope it's nothing serious either. But... That's going to have to wait until the next episode. Now, listen, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode of Killer Frequency and stay tuned for the next one. Same as always, keep being awesome, keep being amazing, keep being you, and I will see you on the next one.